Let's talk about the difference between finding the domain of a rational function versus finding the vertical slope of a rational function. This is the rational function that we'll work on, but let me give you guys some notes right here first. When we want to find the domain of a rational function, the key to remember is that do not reduce anything. Some of you guys might notice that this right here is reducible, but don't do it for the domain. So let me put this down right here for you guys. This is before you reduce. And here's the deal. Whenever we have a rational function, I'm just going to put this right here for you guys. We have a top over bottom. And of course, we remember that we cannot have 0 on the bottom. So that will be the restriction. Set this not equals 0. That's exactly how you find out the restrictions, meaning the x values that we cannot use for the function. So for this one, we're just going to go right ahead and look at this right here and then make it not equal 0. So we're looking at x squared plus 4x plus 3 not equal to 0, and then solve this. Factor this, we get x plus 1 times x plus 3, not equal to 0. And then from here we know x cannot be equal to negative 1, and from here we know x cannot be equal to negative 3. So these are the two x values that we cannot use for this function. That's it. Now, for the vertical asymptote, this is the tricky one. We have to do this after we reduce all the common factors. So this right here is when we after right, reduce. And the reason why it's the following, because you have to make sure that you end up with a non-zero number on the top over zero. Because this is the case that you see the curve will go straight up or straight down. That's how you end up with going to infinity or negative infinity if you talk about limits. So in this case, let's see. On the bottom, we can factor it. So this is just x plus 3 over x plus 1 times x plus 3. And then we are just going to reduce this and that. So we get 1 over x plus 1. And you see, we want to have 0 on the bottom. So we are going to make this equal to 0. So let's go ahead and just say x plus 1 is equal to 0. And we get x is equal to negative 1. And this is, in fact, the only vertical asymptote for that. How about the negative 3? What exactly is negative 3 doing, right? Notice, if you have negative 3, if you plug it into the original, you see that on the top will be 0, on the bottom will also be 0. So that's the 0 over 0 case. What does that do? Well, let me put this down right here for you guys. If we have a 0 over 0 case, let me just write it down right here. Note. If we have a 0 over 0, this right here is going to be an open circle. It's like a gap or like a hole on the curve. So I'm just going to say an open circle on the graph of the function. So you really don't see the graph go straight up or go straight down. So with that being said, let me give the graph for this function for you guys. First off, we know that we have a vertical asymptote at negative 1. So let me just go to negative 1 that says right here. And then here is the vertical dashed line for the vertical asymptote. And in fact, you should notice that this graph is just going to be the shift of 1 over x to the left one time. Well, it's going to look like this. And then like that. Cool. But we're not done yet because from here we know x cannot be equal to negative 3. We already know that x cannot be equal to negative 1 because we have a vertical asymptote. But when we have a negative 0, but when x is equal to negative 3, we will have to go there and let's say it's right here. We will have to go down to the curve and then just erase that and then let's emphasize that we are missing a point with an open circle right here. So you see, this right here is just a missing value. We have an open circle. This is not a vertical asymptote. And the reason why is because when we have x is equal to negative 3, if you put back to the original, we end up with the 0 over 0. And sometimes it's also really useful to find out the y value of the open circle. So to do that, we do the following. We are going to plug in negative 3. Not here, because you get a 0 over 0, it doesn't tell you a thing. You plug in negative 3 into here, and then you end up with 1 over negative 3 plus 1, which is just going to be negative 1 half. So you see that the y value here is negative 1 half. This right here also tells you about the range. And I usually tell my students that 
do the range after we have the graph. So right here we see that y cannot be 0. So that's the first restriction for y. And then now we know y cannot be negative 1 half because that point is missing. Range is usually the trickiest one. So always do that after you have the graph. All right. So hopefully this helps and hopefully this clears up the idea behind finding a domain versus finding the vertical asymptote of a rational function. If you have any questions, just leave it down below and let me know. And as always, that's it.